Welcome to lecture number five, where we talk about the repetition training method. What do we cover in this lecture? We talk about the repetition training method, characteristics of the repetition training method and the practical application. Let's get started. What's the repetition training method and its variations? Here we have it. The repetition training method, we have the repetition method, we have the competition method and we have the control method. I would argue that the competition method and the control method are actually not a repetition method. And we'll get into that in the next lecture when we talk about training methods and variations of training methods and also what is called a training method but is actually not. So for now we talk about the repetition method and the characteristics of the repetition training method. It's interrupted work intervals, but now we have complete rest between the intervals. The intensity is sub-maximal to maximal and the volume is low. Yeah? I discussed it in previous lectures. If intensity is high, volume has to be low. If you want to work at a high volume, intensity has to be lower. That's just a fact. And the density, the work to rest ratio is 1 to 10 or greater, yeah, depending on the activity you're doing. But it can also be 1 to 20 or even higher than that. So how does it look? Very simple. Let's jump into it. So the repetition method is quite simple and straightforward. One of the easiest examples you could think of is a sprint. Yeah. So you sprint at a maximal intensity. So that means you sprint. And how long can you hold 100% intensity? Not too long. Four seconds, four seconds, maybe six. And then you have complete rest. Yeah. Again, now I changed it. We're not working at percentage of the maximum heart rate. So we're just looking at the intensity. And then your recovery. And then we have our next sprint. And again, recovery. Yeah. So that's essentially what the repetition method is. You work at a high intensity and there is complete rest. How could complete rest be defined? Okay, now I have to go back to the example of heart rates. But let's say if this is our resting heart rate here, one of the most simple explanations could be, you say you wanna work at sub-maximal to maximal intensities. So let's say we do our 80%, yeah, so we work up to 80%, which is the lower threshold of our submaximal intensity. Hold it for just a random example, one minute, and we allow recovery until we are at our resting heart rate or almost resting heart rate, and we rinse and repeat. Yeah, so. Yeah. And again, here we can play around with the intensities. So if it's a bit more intense, you want to work up to 90% and then hold this 90% for 30 seconds, whatever that might be. And then you allow for complete rest. And then you go again and repeat that. Yeah. So that's essentially what the repetition method is. High intensities with complete rest. So let's go back and round up our repetition method, training method. Look at the practical application. So what's the practical application? So if we look at endurance as an example, if we would like to work on anaerobic power, the repetition method could be one method of choice. And the adaptations, improved specific anaerobic endurance, improved anaerobic energy transfer, and improved activation of energy-rich phosphates, ATP and CP. For speed training, now we get, excuse me for that, now we get into the details of speed training. Basically for speed training, most trainings you do use the repetition method. So here is one example, maximum speed. What are the adaptations? Improved innovation and an improved contract, relax, cycle ability at maximum speed. Another example, 
the overload method, you know, so uphill sprints, resisted sprints, the repetition method is the method of choice. And adaptations here could be improving intra and intermuscular innovation, so intramuscular recruitment of motor units, firing frequency, intermuscular synchronization of motor units. Improving speeds at higher resistance is another adaptation, improved intra and intermuscular coordination and improved rate of force development. Let's look at strength. Examples. If you train for maximum strength, the repetition method could be your method of choice. And also here we have improved intramuscular coordination, mainly recruitment of motor units, and an improved intermuscular coordination, mainly the synchronization. Another example, if we work on power development, the repetition method might be our method of choice, should be our method of choice. And the adaptations here for the dynamic effort, which is power training at higher intensities, 50 to 70% of the 1RM, for example. And the adaptations, again, improved intramuscular coordination, recruitment of motor units, as well as the firing frequency, also known as discharge rate, and improved intermuscular coordination, the synchronization, and an improved rate of force development. That brings us to the end of this lecture where we talked about the repetition training method, the third method in this mini course. And what did you learn? We talked about the repetition method. We talked about the characteristics of the repetition method. Yeah, mainly complete rest is the main characteristics. And the practical application. When does it make sense to use the repetition method? And when does it not make sense to use the repetition method? I see you in the next one and the last one when we talk about variations of the training methods and we also talk about some, th some things that are called training methods which are actually not training methods. I see you then.